Welcome to episode two of the Calico Cat tutorial. In my first episode, I showed you how I started my painting on this 300 pound paper. And I don't know if I mentioned it, but I used a grid system to transfer the image from the reference photo to my paper, which is a bit more of a freehand style of drawing than just transferring it with a light box. So that is another difference with this painting because it is 300 pound paper, so it's hard to use a light box on this heavy of a paper. So um, I just wanted to share you some of the techniques I used to create this kitty for episode number two. And I used a combination of cobalt blue with naphthol red and some Windsor green gold to create my gray for this one. And I used a lot of water and I kept my paper really wet for most of this painting. Um, as you can see right now, I'm doing little dark eyebrows and those can get really uh, stilted looking if you use a dry on dry technique with those kinds of areas. So I kept my paper moist. I kept going back over my paper and moistening it. And uh, I added a little bit of ultramarine blue for those areas because they are darker gray. And it's almost, a, it's pretty much impossible to get a dark um, gray with cobalt blue in your mix. You've got to use an ultramarine or um, like a Payne's gray or just straight black. So here I'm doing the ears and I'm uh, using my new Alvaro casting net brush, which was really great for getting the little details of these areas. And as you can see, as I put the paint down, it spreads out, which means that I'm working wet in wet and I'm trying to keep all the little details um, nice and soft but there are some areas in the ears that I left white just to keep the definition of the edge of the ear. I kept the very edge of the ear white so that you could see where the edge of the ear was. And then I'm using my rigor brush, of course, to get the little strands of paint out. I had a person, she's definitely a, a complete beginner to watercolor, and she's like, how do you get the lights? Do you mix it with white? No, in watercolor, you don't use white to get your lights. Uh, for those of you who are just starting out with watercolor, you just dilute your paint down so that it's lighter and use the white of the paper to help you get that light hue. You don't mix with white. Now, if you are not doing strict watercolor, you're okay with putting gouache in your watercolor, you can certainly use some gouache or um, there's um, other white paints out there on the market that you can mix with your watercolors and make a lighter tone, but then it's not going to be transparent. It's, it's not going to have that beautiful glow that you can only get with transparent watercolor. So just keep that in mind. If you want to create a white in your painting, that's the hard part of watercolor is keeping your whites white. Keeping that paper where you want it completely white, bone dry at all times. And you have to paint around those areas or use masking to get that effect. So that's a little tip for the very new watercolorists out there. And I love to hear from you guys. So um, thank you for watching if you're a beginner. Um, but anyway, so for all the little different striations in this cat's fur, I used my fur brush. Um, let me see if I can find it. Yes, here it is right in front of me so I can easily show you. See, that's a nice fur brush and there's different brushes you can use to get fur texture. Sometimes I use this. Um, sometimes I use this, which you can see I cut out some of the bristles myself to get um, a fur texture with that. And really, sometimes with this Alvaro casting net, you can just get the brush wet and then spread the bristles out like that and then paint like that. Uh, that's another way to get some fur texture. So you can use a lot of different brushes to get that fur texture. Um, another good one, I've used this thing so much, it's a very cheap craft brush and it's just this really short little kind of stiff thing. 
and uh, you can work dry and dry with something like this and then just kind of like especially the short little nose hairs you can just kind of dot them on and then dot a little bit of water on top of that to soften parts of it um, so there's a lot of different ways to get that fur texture with different brushes so you don't have to have all these different brushes you just have to get creative with the brushes you do have and sometimes some of the cheapest brushes will surprise you and they're, they'll, they'll end up being the perfect thing. So anyway, uh, that's uh, another trick I can give you for creating the unique t textures, and especially a calico cat like this or a tabby cat. They have all those stripes um, and it can get tedious to create all those stripes. So if you have the right brush, you can just go ch 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 done stripe <laughs> and then I've done this trick in other videos where I do the stripes and then in between the stripes and the lighter areas I'll put a puddle of a little bit of a puddle of water and that water will push the paint into thinner stripes so for example I'll have a stripe of puddle a stripe of, of watercolor and then a stripe of puddle and those two puddles will kind of push that stripe in to create more of a stripe um, that's kind of an advanced technique and it's something you can play with just on a piece of watercolor paper before you try it on a real painting, um, but that practice makes perfect and you just have to get a feel for how watercolor works and that is one of the neat things that uh, watercolor will do if you put a puddle of water, that water will seep into your watercolor paint on the paper and push it out. So it creates little flows in the paper and that's really fun to play with if you don't have to have a perfectly exact realistic looking picture if it's okay for it to be a little poetic and to me I think that just makes the painting look more alive somehow it makes it more vibrant to let the paint do its own thing and I did that a lot as you can see on the body of this cat um, which I, I did in that first episode I used a ton of water and just put in some brush strokes of dark fur and just let the, the water create um, rivers and valleys, if you will, through the fur to really give it that fur texture and keep it really soft. So um, that worked well for this painting. So, um, all right, so back to my painting. Let's see what I'm doing. I'm putting in the darker areas of the fur. And for this cat, I just found I had to keep going and going and going when I thought I should be able to be done. But um, the cat has really delicate uh, changes throughout its fur so I had to really go in and put, use a lot of layers to get those different hues throughout the coat and here's my finished painting and uh, tell me what you guys think and um, if you want some more ideas on how to mix grays that certainly could be a good topic anyway I hope you guys are having a good day a good Monday a good start to your week um, I think what I'm going to do is like a favorites video. I haven't done that in a while and I'll talk about my favorite videos, my favorite YouTube artists, my favorite books that I'm reading right now, and um, I'll do a few things like that. So that'll be coming up. So stay tuned and I hope you guys have a good week and enjoy this cooler weather. If hopefully that's what you're getting, I'm loving it. <laughs> so, okay, bye you guys.